Jasper AI has released a new upscaling control net. So today we're going to explore how to set it up, use it, as well as look at a few tips and tricks when it comes to upscaling and compare it to other Flux upscaling methods. Even if you've seen other videos about how to use this Jasper upscaler, I suggest you stay tuned because we're going to dive deep into upscaling with Flux to find the best solution for you. I'm Endangered AI and let's get plugged in. So the first thing you're going to want to do is head on over to the Jasper AI Hugging Face page for their upscaling control net. Links down below. Head into files and you want to download this safe tensors file into your control net folder. You can find your control net folder inside your comfy UI folder, models, and then in control net. Now, in case you're wondering, I'm using a cloud-based GPU on RunPod. If you want to use the same template that I'm using, again, links are down below. And what I've done is I have renamed it to Jasper Upscale dot save tensors just so that I can differentiate it with the other control nets. Once you've done that, you're pretty much ready to go as the nodes that you need are actually included by default in Comfy UI. So this is what the basic workflow looks like. Uh, I've made a few tweaks and adjustments just for ease of use, but essentially what you're going to do is you're going to grab your starting image over here. These are just a couple of nodes that we've got here from the easy use collection, just so that we know what the width and height is of the images that are going in and going out. We've got the upscale image by node here, which I'll explain in just a moment. This is not the actual upscaler. And then we've got a whole bunch of standard control net and comfy UI nodes here. The standard dual clip loader, your text encoder, flux guidance, uh, your vey, and your unit loader. The key differences here is we've got the apply control net, where we're loading in the Jasper upscale control net model, feeding that into control net. We are feeding the unupscaled image into apply control net. And then we feed the upscaled image into the case sampler as a latent. Now you'll note we're using the vanilla case sampler, not the custom sampler that we use for a lot of flux videos and then a VE decoder. And that's pretty much it. We'll go through a couple of examples here and then we'll run into a few advanced techniques on how to use upscalers and compare it with a few of the other techniques. In this particular example, I have uploaded a standard flux generated image 1024 by 1024. You can see it here and we've upscaled it to 2048. Now I am using a custom image node. In this case, it's the image comparer by RG3. And what it allows me to do is actually mouse over and compare the before and after image A and image B. So you can see here, we've got image A, which is our 1024 image. It looks good. It's not very crisp. It's got a little bit of, of blurriness going on there. And then this is the upscaled version. Now it's important to note what's happening here is it's not actually just upscaling the image, it's upscaling and enhancing. So when you take a starting image and we'll go through a, a very low res example, there's a lot of detail that's not there. What's happening is the AI model is going in and adding in those details as you upscale it. And it actually even works for non-upscaled images. You could take a 1024 image from Flux, which sometimes looks a little grainy or lacks a little bit of focus, put it through a 1x factor upscale and you'll actually get it back with a lot more detail and crispness. So you can see here, you know, there's subtle changes made. Uh, the hair is a little bit better drawn out. Um, there's a little bit more color added in and just an overall sense of improvement. Now, there's a couple of things that we can do to try and improve this. But before that, let's compare it with another image. So this was a flux generated 1024 by 1024 image. But what if we grab something that's quite a bit smaller? So this is a small image. The original one was 11 kilobytes. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and upscale this by 7x. Now, what did I mean when I said that this is not the upscaler? What this does is this takes the existing image that you have and it just makes it bigger. There's no additional detail added in. It just takes those pixels and either stretches them out or simply duplicates them. So if you start with a blurry image, you end up with a canvas that is a bigger version of that blurry image. What we're doing here is we're essentially taking that image and using it as a canvas for what the AI is going to upscale into. So in this case, we've got this tiny 11 kilobyte image. I think it's like 200 by 300 pixels. Um, it'll show up here in the image size. That's why I like to have this. And let's go ahead and run it. So we can see here it's 340 by 577 and we're going to end up with an image at 2380 by 3899. Now it's worth noting, I've not run this test before. These dimensions are considerably higher than what Flux usually generates. So I'm not sure if we will get great results. I have seen upscales go up to as much as 2048 by 2048. As we saw earlier, I went from a 1024 to a 2048 image. Uh, but let's see how this turns out. If it doesn't turn out well, some of the techniques I'm going to show you guys in a bit will help with that. 
And there we go. After a bit of a wait, we got the image. This is the before. Oh, oh goodness. So that was actually the after. So this is the before and the after did not do a great job of bringing back detail. Now, uh, that could be because we went a little aggressive and went for a, a 7x increase in size. It could be, like I said, because Flux is trained on maximum 1024 to 2048 images. But we do see some improvements. Um, you know, we've, it's gone from this blurry mess to a slightly less blurry mess. I'm going to try one more time with a different upscale factor, and then we're going to try some of the other techniques and see if we can get something a little bit more out of this image. So this time we're going to upscale it by 4x, and that should give us a 1360 by 8 size, which should fit within what Flux is comfortable with. There's one more thing worth noting that I forgot to mention earlier. On the case sampler, make sure you set your CG to 1.0 as we are using the flux guidance over here. So at 1.0, it will take whatever's coming from here. Otherwise, you may run into some conflict and some issues. And here we go. This is our second attempt and we can see the before and the after is significantly better. So it looks like the issue had a lot more to do with the fact that the image was a little bit too big for flux. We can see the before and we can see after we've actually got a person. There's facial detail in there. Hands look good in the right place, touching the glasses and, you know, thank God for flux and good hands. Gone are the days of stable diffusion and gnarly hands. And generally a good image overall with a good amount of detail. There's still a little bit of a glowy effect that I'm not too big of a fan of, but overall this is a great image to start with. Now, what if we did actually want an image of that size? What if we want an image that is bigger than 1024, 2048? How do we achieve that? while getting the enhancing effects of this upscaler. Well, I'm going to cover that in just a bit. Before that, I want to show you guys a advanced version of this workflow where we take advantage of Facebook's Florence or Microsoft Florence and use it to introduce a text description to our upscaling process. So let's go ahead and grab the same image, give it that for a upscale. And what's going to happen now is ideally this node should give us a description of what's happening in here. Let's go ahead and check a few other parameters. Our CFG is set to one and go ahead and queue that up. This video is sponsored by Prompt Crafters. Prompt Crafters is a AI prompt image database that is specifically designed to help you get started with images when you don't really know where to start or you're struggling to come up with a prompt that captures what you're trying to convey. The way it works is images are sorted by a whole range of categories, whether they're by platform, art, art style, architecture, art style, photography, marketing, web design, and so on. And each of those have their own subcategories. You can browse through the image library and find an image that you like as a starting point. In this case, let's grab this one, which is Santa Claus on a surfboard enjoying the big wave with his personal reindeers. You can see over here what the image looks like along with a few variations and how it compares in both Mid Journey and Flux. As you can see here, we've got the Mid Journey preview, the Flux preview down here. And the prompt is further broken down by the key elements, including whether it contains any descriptors, art styles, artists, or any enhancers that help make the image better, whether it's 4K, 8K, and so on and so forth. This helps you understand what makes a prompt work and what are the elements that help you create that prompt. Use this information to design the perfect prompt if you want access to the Prompt Crafter database, please check the link down below. Thanks, and back to the video. And with that, we can see how the example changes quite significantly. By introducing the Florence captioning node, we now are able to submit a text prompt along with the upscaling. And in this case, we can actually see that in the process, the glasses have been removed. However, we still get a really high quality image, I would argue almost slightly better in some areas. However, your mileage may vary. Now, one of the things to note, let's say that we were happy with this image and we wanted to try and bring the glasses back. Well, you can come down here to the apply control net and we can adjust the strength. Now, typically you're gonna wanna leave the strength between 0.4 and 0.8 with, if I remember correctly, 0.8 giving you an image that follows your original or source image a little bit more closely and giving the AI less variance. The downside of that is that you're gonna get less work on the details. And if you lower the strength, you are going to get a final image that adheres less closely to the original image, but then the AI has a little bit more freedom to go in and fill in the details. If I'm wrong, I'll put a text thing down below and just say that it's flipped. 
So let's go ahead and increase the strength to 0.8 and see if we're able to get those glasses back. Okay, and here we go. Uh, as I suspected, by increasing the strength of the control net, we are able to get the glasses back. Now, there's a little bit of artifacting going on here. We have brought the glasses back, but the image is still blurry overall. You kind of have this strange artifacting that's happening here. Um, this compare, it's not letting me use my mouse, but we have had a, a significant degradation in quality. What happens? if we bring the strength back down to zero point. Now, it's interesting to note while this is running, uh, I will say this is a perfect candidate to grab this image and rerun it through the enhancer at a 1x scale because we've gotten it to the size that we want, but we're not happy with it. There's artifacting. You could run it through and because there's a lot more fidelity in the image, a lot of the details should remain. And in fact, we'll try that in a moment just now. And there we go. By reducing the strength, we are able to get back a lot of quality in the image. We have almost no artifacting, but once again, we lost those glasses and there's a significant change in the overall look of the face. However, other details look pretty good. Um, the outfit is the same, shoes are the same, and in fact, uh, everything looks crisper and with absolutely no artifacting. But like I said earlier, what if we wanna retain that artifacted image and that's the image that we wanna work with? Well, you can come back here and grab that image. So let's grab the image that we generated earlier, set our upscaler to one, back down to 0.6, as this is the one that kind of gives you the balance between being very strict and giving the AI the freedom that it needs. And let's go ahead and generate that. And here we go. So we were able to pass the image through. Uh, once again, we have lost the glasses, and I think that has something to do with the fact that it's not being picked up here by Florence. If you look at the description, the glasses are not referenced. However, what I do like is additional details have been added in here. You can kind of see here some colors been added in, the artifacting has been taken away, but we're still shy of our goal. I'm gonna try one more time by bumping this up to 0.7 to see if we can get that back. If not, we're gonna move on uh, as I wanna explore the other upscaling options. But you can see here how by just tweaking a few parameters, we can get it working. Another thing that you could do, which I don't have set up here, is we could add on a node to append glasses to whatever Florence generate. Yeah, I don't have that installed on this particular instance of Comfy UI, but that is an option that you could do. We could just grab here prior to the text encode, feed in the caption, put in a node here, where we add in some text, append some text, or prepend the text, glasses, or has glasses is wearing glasses, and then feed that combination into the text encoder. And that should help resolve the issue as it will bring attention to the fact that, you know, she's wearing glasses. Okay, and here we go, we got it back. So by tweaking our strength up to 70, we can see here that the character's got the glasses, but Again, we're back in that situation where we've got that artifacting. Uh, the teeth look a little strange. Uh, there's some weirdness happening here in the hand. So uh, it would be a matter of scaling it back point by point until you get a result that works for you, maybe 0.65, 68, and so on. So we've now seen two situations where we have taken the Jasper model and put an image through it where we've upscaled it to pushing that 2048 size. We have kept the image the same and enhanced it. We have taken a really small image and upscaled it to a 1028 to 2048 uh, um, range. But what if we wanna go bigger? Well, as we saw earlier, when we tried to push the model to create those larger size images, uh, it failed, it just wouldn't let me. So that's how the Jasper AI model handles upscaling. It's actually more of an enhancer and upscaler, and we're able to take images that are small and bring them up to that flux size, which is between 1024 and 2048. Now, that's not the only upscaling control net out there. If you watched my previous video, you'll know that Shacker also released a all-in-one control net model, which includes with it tiled control net. Now, if you don't know what tiled control net is for, that is a way to upscale images by breaking it down and upscaling each component and then stitching it all together. So just for the purposes of today's example, we're gonna compare Jasper AI or Jasper's model with the Shacker one. Now, we've got two images here. We're gonna load in this one, which we checked out at the beginning of the video. 
And this is what the Shaker one looks like. Now I did a pretty good job of upscaling it. However, you can see there's a little bit of strange artifacting here in the mouth area. Let me pull it up. So if we compare the original image here on the right and look at the one over here on the left, it's done an okay job of bringing in a little bit more detail. The hair looks a little shinier. The eyes look a little bit bigger, but very subtle differences. And in fact, in some areas, there's actually some worsening. We can see here the hands have actually gotten blurrier and the teeth also don't look so good. The other thing to note as well is that Shaker did not actually increase the size of the image. Uh, it's still 1024 by 1024. So in this case, we did not see a significant enhancement in the quality of the image. But what happens if we once again grab our tiny image? How does the Shaker tiled control net compare? Oh boy. So this is our original image. And if you look over here, not so great. So although the tiled control net is meant to upscale, this is the reason why it hasn't gotten much attention and why the Jasper model is such a great introduction to the Flux ecosystem. But we still have that one limitation, right? What if we want to go from a 1024 or 2048 image and we want to go bigger? We want to go 4K, we want to go 8K. How do we go about using that? Well, that's where a, a good old friend, the SD Upscaler comes in handy. Oop, I've got it over here. So using the Ultimate SD Upscaler, we can plug in our original image, use our Flux model, which you can see here is connected over here. Now, I will be releasing all of these workflows either through Patreon or down below. Uh, there'll be a free version for everybody. It links down below and then I'll have premium versions like this one available on my Patreon. But you can see here, we've got the Flux unit loader plugged into here. We've got the Flux Vey plugged in here, uh, positive and negative prompts, which we've got down here. And then the upscale model here. In this case, I've got the 4X Anime Sharp as we're gonna once again use that. And let's go ahead and upscale it. Now, the free version is gonna allow you to just upload an image and upscale it using Flux. However, if you wanna generate and upscale all in the same workflow, that's gonna be the premium version which is what you can see here. It's currently disabled. This is the Flux image generation workflow, which then plugs into the upscaler. And so once again, a couple of things to note here, just like before we are setting our CFG to one, uh, everything else should be good to go. And what this is doing is like before, it's breaking up the image into smaller chunks and upscaling it. And it does a much better job than the tiled control net we looked at earlier at giving us a high quality image. And there you have it. As the upscaler has given us a very faithful recreation of the original image, it's fixed in size and we can see here, you know, there's parts of the image that lack that little bit of crispness. We've got that crispness here, lines are sharp, uh, colors are, are vibrant, um, and we can really see a tremendous amount of detail in the image. Now, one more thing we're gonna look at is what if we wanna combine the enhancer that the Jasper has and the ability to upscale of SD Upscaler. Well, I've got you guys sorted there as well. There's a workflow available again for the patrons that takes the Jasper workflow, if I can find it. Oh, here we go. Uh, and adds on the ultimate SD Upscaler over here. So we can once again, grab our image, have it enhanced by Jasper and then further up by ultimate SD Upscaler. So let's actually over here, uh, even with the artifacting and see if ultimate SD upscale can fix some of those issues. And there you have it. Now we have our enhanced and upscaled image. And if we can compare here, I, I actually can't tell which is the upscaled. I think this is the upscaled one as it's got a little bit more detail and a few elements here that have been added in. And this is the before. And there you have it. That is a complete guide to upscaling on Flux. We've covered how to enhance an image, whether you're going from a very small image to a flux size image or from a flux size image to a super size image, whether that's 4K or 8K, as well as how it compares with the existing tile control net. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or issues, please come by our Discord and check it out. Finally, if you wanna support the channel, please come by our Patreon as your support makes it possible for me to create these videos. Thanks, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.